last week with Jamie when he said it, it lit my spirit up about supernatural September. Supernatural September. Now, we talked to the membership group yesterday, man, 22, 23, probably 10, 11 families, 22, 23 people are making Bethel their home. Give God a shout for that. Become a part of the Bethel family. Um, as I think about that, and, and as I reminded, and I was reminded to talk a little bit about it yesterday, back in 2019, when we stepped out of Bethel 1.0 and moved into Bethel 2.0, we stepped out of the first 20 years, now we're into the next 20 years, the second 20 years, we're actually in the third year now of the 20 years. It simply amazes me to see the words God gives us and how they come to pass. Like Pastor Seth says all the time, you have to fight for your prophecies, right? You have to stand in faith. You have to fight the good fight of faith. And you have to deal with unbelief. You have to deal with anything that would rob you of standing on that word that God's given you. And, uh, you know, one of the words God gave us when we planted Bethel, as we were praying in our home in Columbus, and, okay, Lord, we've made this step of faith, and we're getting ready to go. We didn't have a name for the church yet. And a few other things, we were praying about it. And one of the things God said was, uh, I want you to rent a facility when you get there. And Pastor Rod and a couple other great friends said, don't worry about renting a facility, just rent a hotel. We'll come down and help you get a couple. We'll preach, man. We'll have a time. We'll have a couple hundred people there. You'll have a couple hundred people at least when we leave town. And that was out of the goodness of their heart. And what an honor they'd even suggest that. But I said, you know, that's not what God said. I, I, he said, what do you mean? I said, well, God told me that. I need to rent a building. He said, because when they come into that building, my, he said, my spirit's going to touch them, and they're going to go, I'm home. And so we didn't tell our people yesterday any of that, and we had them introduce themselves, talk, and I think 80% or more said, I just, when I came in, I just felt like I was home the first time. Now, here that is 23 years later. It really is probably 24 years ago that that word came to me. Then God said, you, you'll be a church of the Gentiles. And Steph and I were praying, church of the Gentiles? What's the church of the Gentiles? What are you talking about, church of the Gentiles? And then God explained it in my spirit, and that was, it'd be like going to a UK football game or basketball game. You have people from every uh, social economic background, every level of education, every kind of employment, every race that you could just imagine. Just, just it looks like a big football or basketball audience. And, I mean, just look around how prophetic that is. And our membership class was just as, just as beautiful and diverse as this room is right now. Why did I tell you that? Because the seats you're sitting in is prophetic. At one time, we were believing for this building, and that became this. <laughs> and we were, at one time, we were believing to buy seats to put in this building, that was what we were believing for. Now it's this. At one time, we were believing for you to be here in this church, and that was that, but now this is it. Everybody say, this is it. This is my time. Say, this is my time. This is my season for the supernatural to touch my life. Every area that needs it, this is my season. This is my time to accept and receive and walk in the supernatural. Yeah. What is the supernatural? It's something that's natural that super gets on it. It's not real complicated. Something natural that super gets on it. And when super gets on it, bones grow and heal. When super gets on it, Clear minds and clear hearts come to pass. When super gets on it, salvation begins to take place. When super gets on it, muscles and tendons release and go back into place. When super comes on it, eyesight becomes clear again. When super comes on it, that's when cancer and death sentences from the devil have to leave your body. Everybody say super, super. natural, natural. September. September. So you need to jump on that word. 
And I see that many of you have because it's just a great, great audience today. We see the church has grown. It's beautiful. But the key is how are we growing? Now, last week I was talking to you about, to you about the pillar of revelation. I'm just going to take a few minutes on this. I want to get this in your spirit again. Even I love what the dictionary uh, defines revelation as the word revelation. It's God's disclosure of himself and his will to his creatures. Man, isn't that something? God's disclosure of himself and his will to his creatures. You know, when you give full disclosure, like in a real estate deal or something, when you give disclosure, that means you're sharing something that someone else probably doesn't know or see. You're sharing something that could look private or secret, but you actually saw it, and you know about it. And now the person purchasing your property, you have to give disclosure of whatever's wrong or whatever's dangerous or whatever's not right in that property so that they will absolutely know it and see it. And God is doing what? When, he, when we walk in Revelation, it's God giving full disclosure of himself of things we don't know or see, which only could come from him. And once we get full disclosure of God and who he is, then he says, I'm going to release my will to my creatures. What is his will? To be the head and not the tail, to be above and not beneath. What is his will? By his stripes you were healed. What is his will? John 10, 10. What did Jesus say? Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I come to do what? Give life and life more abundantly. He is good, devil bad. It's real easy. Satan's will, bad. God's will, good. Devil, bad. God, good. Sickness, bad. Healing, good. Poverty, bad. Prosperity, good. I just want you to realize anger, bad. Peace, good. Say, it's good in the house today. The way I've defined it over the years is simply that it's the anointing to see. It's the anointing to see. Now, out of that, 2 Corinthians 4, I shared these few scriptures. I'm going to do it first in the New King James. I'm going to switch to another translation. I want to get this in your spirit. And Paul is talking about, as they were ministering to the church, how they took care of the gospel. And Paul says in verse 3, Satan is directly involved in what? Blocking our access to light. But even if our gospel is veiled. Now, what's he talking about? Blocking our access to light, to, to have the gospel, the word of God made visible. To have the word of God seen and understood to give full disclosure of what the Word is and who the Word is. Full access to the light. Full access to revelation. Full access to understanding. Full access to knowing what you could not know on your own except God. Hmm. Everybody say full access. This coming month, September, even it begins today really, is your full access to the supernatural. Do you believe that this morning? <clears throat> He says, but even if our gospel is veiled, veiled, covered, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God, Satan, it's little g, God of this age has blinded, <clears throat> who do not believe, lest the light or the revelation, the knowledge of the gospel of the glory of Christ. What's the word glory? God made visible, God seen, God present. Christ is the anointed one. It's whenever the anointed one is made visible and seen, what? Through the manifested presence of his attributes. <laughs> Who is what? The image of God. Should do what? Should shine on them. Whose minds God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel, lest the revelation of God, lest the revealed truth of God, lest the uncovered revelation of God, what? Shines on them. In other words, your light produces light. God said we're to be what here at this church? A city on a hill. Why? He, he says what? Don't put your light under a bushel. Put it out where it can be seen. What's he talking about? 
Put your love out there. Put your knowledge out there. Put your faith out there where it can be seen, where it can build a city of God, where it can build what he wants built. And what he wants built is people blessed, healed, delivered, set free, and producing more Christians. That's what he wants. I think we call it around here a difference maker. Now let's look at this other translation. They'll put it up on the screen if they have it. I don't know if they have that this translation back there or not. I'm going to read it to you out of the Passion Bible, and I'm going to take you back to verse 2. Here Paul says, We reject any shameful cover-up and refuse to resort to cunning trickery of distorting the Word of God. Let me tell you what. Whenever I understand, whenever I see someone that doesn't quite know what they're teaching, but they're trying to teach it, that means they don't have revelation. They have knowledge about it, but they don't know it. The word know in the Greek language is ekgnosis. Where we get that from, it means to come together as producing a child. It means coming together and, and, and connecting as one, ekgnosis. And what I want you to realize is I understand when people try to teach or preach something or share something and they don't truly have the birthing of it in them, the creation of God, God's will, God's spirit touching their spirit with knowledge and light and understanding, then it's just kind of like, oh, that sounds good. I think that's pretty good. But whenever someone has a revelation of it, they can manifest it. They can manifest, what's that mean? Make it visible. I have a revelation of healing. That's why God uses me to manifest it. It's not my gift. It's God's gift. It's, it, it's not, you know, my anointing. It's God's anointing. I, I have the gift of faith I release over other things other than healings, for over all kinds of things, salvation, deliverance. Well, where does that come from? That comes from revelation. That comes from a revealed word of God. When I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I'd been preaching a few years. I was still running my businesses. And, and, and I, uh, when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I went to this church, and I had to leave my beautiful little Nazarene church I love so much, but I didn't want to cause a ruckus there, right? And, and so I went to this spirit-filled church. And when I went there, I'll never forget, I went because I wanted to be spirit-filled first. I'll back up a little bit. I wanted to be spirit-filled And this guy was a comptroller at a coal mine where I used to have a lot of workers and do a lot of business. And, and, but he was a a spirit-filled preacher, pastor too. And he was always witnessing to me. Oh, just in his sweet little kind way. I didn't realize what he was doing. He's just messing me up. I didn't know it. Well, finally, I was in a a university, Mount Mount Vernon Nazarene University up in Northern Ohio. And because, you know, I had to have my, my ministry, MDiv and all that, if I'm going to be a preacher, a pastor in the Nazarene, you know, I had to go through all the stuff and some of that stuff's good. Um, and so he's rocking my world. And I, I'm so convicted. I drive, it's about almost an hour north of, of Columbus. So I was driving four hours, whatever, four and a half hours. And I drive back and, and I went over to his church on a Sunday night. It was about 30 minutes from where I lived. And when I went over there, I told him, I said, well, before I said, I said, you know, Pastor Danny, I want to receive the baptism. But I got some questions. He said, well, after service tonight, we'll meet in the office. I said, okay. I had a legal pad with about, a whole one to two sheets of questions about the Holy Spirit. You know, it's one thing when you have a lot of questions, that's good, but they're not very good if you don't get answers. So I go back, and he's so sweet and humble but powerful, and he said, okay, he said, so Mary, what has what, what he got? And by the time I asked him the second question, he said, do you just want to receive this? I threw that thing down, and I said, yes, I do. Now, when I received it, that means I was leaving where my family went to church. That means I was leaving everything. I was going to the whole new thing. I didn't know. He prayed for me, and I felt the presence and power of God. He said, actually, you already have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but it's going to start manifesting now because you've been seeking him. So, okay. So I go home, and I'm laying in my bed. I don't know if it's that night or a few nights later. Well, I was laying in my bed, and I got my prayer language. Man, I just started praying, praying in my prayer language. Then I don't know if it's several days or a week or so later, I'm laying in my bed sound asleep. This is, everybody say revelation. You don't get revelation on your own. God God is a little selfish about that because he's God and we're not. Revelation comes by God birthing it in you. I'll never forget this. I, I was laying there in my bed 
you know, and I'm a light sleeper, you know, anyway, so I'm laying there, and all of a sudden, I, and I always was a side sleeper, and for some reason that night, I was just laying like this in my bed, and all of a sudden, it's like I could hear a wind come into the room, and I felt this thing from the bottom of my feet go, and top me go, I was like, oh, whew. I did open my eyes. I knew that was God. I was like, oh, man, that's the best feeling I ever had. Other than being saved, that was it. It may have topped that. It felt great. And I was like, I guess it's just an addition to it. Within a second, the second time, I was like, oh. Now I'm like, you know, you jump in cold water trying to breathe. I'm, I'm starting to like gasp a little. I'm, I got my eyes closed. I don't know how much more of this I could handle, Lord. This is beautiful. And God said, I'm anointing you right now. I'm anointing you. I said, yes, Lord. I'm talking to God without opening my mouth. But I'm talking to him. Oh, Lord, I don't know if I can take it anymore. And here he comes a third time from by my feet. To the top of my, and I'm, that time it felt so good. And I think he's going for a fourth. But I had to shake myself and raise up in my bed because I was afraid I was just going to go on into heaven, which probably wouldn't have been a bad thing, right? It'd be a good thing. From that experience, I didn't understand it. I didn't really have revelation of it. I didn't have a revelation of God's presence being manifested through his attributes in my life. And then you've heard me tell a story. Probably recently I told it, and I haven't told it for years, but I think I told it recently to you, about my cousin Sue, who had been an alcoholic and other things. She's only in her, I don't even know if she was 50, probably late 40s. And uh, she uh, had cirrhosis of the liver. And was on, I don't know, she had 20 or 25 bottles of medication. She was like one of the, the last stages of it. So her mom drove her in from Columbus. Her mom, she came in from Columbus with her mother, and she was visiting my mom because my mom was always like a mom to other people. Well, I was at church. I come home from church that evening, and there's Sue. I'm like, hi, sis, how you doing? They started telling me what's going on. And I said, Sue, do you want to get healed? She said, yeah. I said, uh, you want to you give your life to Christ? She said, yeah. So we prayed for salvation. And then uh, I said, okay. I've never really done this, but I, I, I know that I know for some reason. I just know that I know God's going to heal you right now. She said, I'm ready. Man, I started praying and laid my hands on her at the kitchen table, mom's little house, mom and my, my aunt there and mom. And Sue just, man, the power of God come on her. She started shaking. She started weeping. I mean, you could just feel the strength. I mean, she was like, you know, Dr. Hager would know how someone in the final stage of cirrhosis level, they're so small and their color and all. All of a sudden, man, I'm like, woo, what's going on? I was afraid to open my eyes. I finally had to open my eyes and look. Woo, that's crazy. When I took my hands off her, she jumped up and screamed and started jumping in that kitchen. I mean, this is a woman who had to help her in, up the steps in the house. She said, I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed. I said, well, great, Sue, that's awesome. And I was like, whoo, this is pretty cool. I've never seen, laid hands on anybody be healed. And about that time, she said, I'm flushing every pill I got. I said, how many you got? I don't know, it's 20 bottles of different kinds of things. They were I said, whoa, 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 now Sue, you know. I'm new at this. <laughs> so I can't really, you know, my advice would be just go back to your doctor and confirm. She said, why? He already confirmed I'm dying. I said, well, it's on you. You do whatever you want to do. So on that night, she flushed those things down, come back, at the, uh, uh, come back to see mom the next day. She's helping clean the house and running all over the house. And, and mom's crying. My aunt's crying. And Sue's laughing. And dad, she said, I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. I don't need to go see the rest of the family. I'm healed. I'm healed. And, you know, she's still alive today and has a cleaning business. <laughs> Why did I say that? Because you need to understand when God puts the super on the natural, it changes. And it comes from revelation. It comes from the revealed knowledge of God, knowing him, ekmosis, as being uh, birth of him and with him as one. As a husband and wife would come together, it's, 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 it's the same word you'd use for, for well, you know, the word. I don't want kids in here, whatever. But that, right? That makes babies. Ekmosis. Look at us now. He said, we, re, we, re, we reject every shameful cover-up and refuse to resort to cunning trickery, trickery or distorting of the word of God. And, 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 and I guess I got on that to say this to you. It takes someone longer to explain a lie than it does to tell the truth. Anybody know that? 
They may not even know they're not telling the truth. They're just not being truthful. They're acting like they know it, but they don't. You know, it's like when you're at a funeral, and, and God bless pastors. I'm not calling them liars or preachers, but, you know, God don't pick little lilies. And, you know, God, God doesn't kill, steal, or destroy. Jesus made that clear in John 10, 10. The God of this world has that all under control with the, the curse that's on this world because of the fall of Adam and Eve. Devil bad, God good. So, you know, I, it's hard for me to be at a funeral. And Mark's like this too. It's like hard to be in there and I'm, I'm not doing a ceremony or something and I'm listening. I'm going, oh my God, I, if I was this poor family, I'd just leave and go cry myself out here somewhere because you're about to make me cry. Because they're going to get an emotion going, but there was no freedom. He, they weren't delivering peace that passes your own understanding. Understanding that my loved one is gone and I'm not going to see him until we get to heaven, right? And, and, and not focusing on that, but focusing on the emotions of the moment. Well, you don't have to do much to get people emotional when we've just lost a loved one. And it takes them longer to explain that goopy stuff than it does to, to tell you the truth. Because God don't kill, God don't steal, and God don't destroy we're under the new covenant. Now, the old covenant did some of that, <laughs> allowed it to be done. But what I want you to realize today is, guys, that he wants you to have a full disclaimer of who he is, right, and his will for your life. His will is for you to be free and whole and restored and full and overflowing. He said, instead, we open up our souls to you. We open up our souls to you. In the Aramaic, Aramaic language, it says, we commend ourselves to you. In the original, in the Aramaic, where the Greek was translated from. We open up our souls to you. We open up. What's your soul? Your decision-making resource, your mind, will, and emotions. It's like we, may, we open all, everything up. Because listen, anything you get in the spirit also many times has to come through your mind. When you gave your life to Christ, what did you have to do? You had to think about it and make a decision, didn't you? So, so, so much goes through our mind and we don't attribute it. So he said, we pray, we ministered our souls to you, look, by presenting the truth to everyone's conscience. He said, now conscience is not so. Conscience is spirit. Con spirit is the communion and the consciousness of God in you. Spirit is who you really are. You have a soul and live in a body. First Thessalonians 5 says what? It says, Paul said, I pray for your W-H-O-L-E, your whole spirit, soul, and body, that it be found blameless in that day. For a man that wrote two-thirds of the New Testament under the action of the Holy Spirit, why would he make it three parts when it's supposedly two? Now, I know there's times where it's confusing. It's hard to tell the difference. Because Hebrews chapter 4 tells us in about verse 4, says that the only way your spirit and soul can be divided or discerned is through the word of God. In other words, a revelation of God, the revealing. But you can know the word, but not know the word. You know about the word, but you don't know the word. See, if you know the word, you know the word is not just something written in John 1.1. 1, 1, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. On down in there, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Who is it? That's Jesus. Everybody say Jesus. <clears throat> By presenting truth to everyone's spirit, what you're doing when you're ministering to someone for healing or deliverance or salvation, whatever, you're first going in for their intellect. You're going in for their mind. You're getting their attention. You're trying to give them something that's going to give them the, the truth or give them revelation of the truth so they can turn something on in their spirit person. Because what got born again when you got born again? Your soul's already alive. John 3 says your spirit is what got born again. The spirit, your spirit was, has been abiding in the state of death. You were born with it in a death state, abiding in that death state. I don't know sure if it's dead, but it, it's not awake. It's no, you don't have access to it until you make a decision with your mind and your heart to say, I believe Jesus rose from the dead. I want to be the Lord and Savior of my life. You confess with your mouth. You believe in your heart, confess with your mouth. Jesus is Lord and you'll be saved. So what am I saying? There's so much happening in this room right now, but I feel such a, 
a presence of God to do supernatural things right now. I feel the presence of God to mess with some bones in your backs and your legs. I feel the presence of God touching your organs and your liver and your kidneys. I feel the presence of God wanting to just move in blood disorders. I feel the presence of God wanting to bring deliverance to your mind because you're suffering. You see, suffering is a choice because I only suffer based on what I focus on. And if I focus on it, it brings that pain. It brings sorrow to my heart and remorse and regret and condemnation. Holy Spirit is wanting to put the super on your natural and recreate and transform you and your situation. Hmm. Mm. Thank you, Father. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Even if our gospel message is veiled or covered, it is only veiled to those who are perishing for their minds have been blinded by the God of this age. In other words, you're only, the only way you can't see the gospel is if you don't have revelation of it. The only way you can't see the God, and, and you can't believe it if you don't have revelation of it. Remember what I've been teaching you the last couple times is what? Seeing is more real than hearing, right? Once you see something, it's hard for someone to convince you that it's not true, isn't it? So it said, leaving, it said, the God of this age, leaving them in unbelief. Their blindness, what's blindness? They're not understanding, discerning, or seeing the word of God as it is. Their blindness keeps them what? From seeing the day spring light. Whew. In the Aramaic, that, that, the day spring of light, you know what that means? The flame of the good news. The flame of the of the good news because the gospel is like fire. It brands us. It burns things away out of our life. It fires us up and fills us up. It's like the flame of God. Seeing the day spring light or the flame of the good news of the gospel of what the glory, doxa, God made visible, God seen, God's presence manifested, of Christ, the anointed one, who is the divine image of God. Divine, what's that talking about? That's talking about the Godhead, one of the three, divinity, one of the three Godheads, the Son. The divine image of God, imagio, likeness, same DNA. For we are now, your, for we are your servants for Jesus' sake, for God who said, let brilliant light Shine out in darkness. Wow. Let brilliant light shine out in darkness. Hallelujah. What Paul's trying to help you understand here, us to understand, Paul trying to help us understand that the light is both literal and a metaphor. It's literal and a metaphor for spiritual revelation and shows that the creation narrative provides us with what? An allegory pointing toward the experience of the birth in Christ. Then it goes on to say, is one who has cascaded his light, talking about Jesus, into us. Everybody say, into me. His flame into me. His fire into me. His presence into me. The brilliant dawning light of his glory, of the glorious, what? Knowledge, ecnosis, one with God, knowing of God, we gaze into the face of Jesus Christ. What's he saying? You're gonna gaze into the face of Jesus Christ. When you gaze into the face of Jesus Christ, what do you see when you see someone's face? You can tell their demeanor. You, you, you can see what they're concerned about or not concerned about. When you gaze, you, you see their eyes. They have ears, they have nose, they have a mouth, all these things. When you gaze in the face of Christ, you're going to hear what you need to hear. You're going to see what you need to see. You're going to sense like smell. You're going to sense what you need to sense. When you, when you tap into the face of Christ, he is the light. Most people just see him as Lord, Savior. Most people just see him as not just Lord, Savior. Most people just see him as 
uh, you know, the comforter and all that. But let me tell you something. He's way, much, he's all those things and much, much more. He is the light of revelation to reveal and uncover to you whatever you need at this very second. Not moment, second. Hmm. The key to maturing and moving beyond sickness and moving beyond poverty and moving beyond fear and unbelief and anger and all those things and unforgiveness. What is it's, The key to it is maturing in Christ. What's that mean? Maturing in what I see. Maturing in what I see without a physical manifestation. See, maturing in what I see without having a physical manif manifestation is revelation. In other words, it means I can't see it, but I see it. And that's the way the revelation of God operates. Some people just get a vision or a picture. God gives me a vision through hearing, and he describes the way a person looks, and then I can see them or describes what clothes they have on or what's going on in their life or a piece of that. Well, I don't have knowledge of those people. I don't know what's going on in their lives, but God does. And they have obviously been doing something to pull on God. There's people here today you came expecting. Make my job easy. You came expecting today. I said, you came expecting today. 